Who are the Archangels? Why are they so important? How do we welcome them into our lives? So many questions here, but to help us do the next right thing is Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Ply. Good morning, Debbie and Adam. Good morning, Keith. Happy Monday to you and uh, to all our Morning Joy listeners. Yes, uh, yesterday was the Feast of uh, the Archangels. Adam, beautiful feast. I wish, um, I kind of wish our, our parish said a little bit more about it. Uh, they didn't, unfortunately, which um, you know how I feel about the angels, Adam. I could have spent the whole entire, uh, well, not the whole entire Mass, but pretty much the majority of the Mass talking about the angels. So we're going to do it uh, today on The Next Right Thing, talking about the archangels. Tomorrow is the Feast of the Guardian Angels, but we need to hear from you. So we're opening up the phone lines at 877 877- Seven five seven nine four two four eight seven 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 five seven nine four two four. If you have felt the protection of the angels, especially we're talking about Saint Michael today, Adam. Yeah, Deb. So it was a beautiful feast day. Got to go to a mass at a church um, parish named for Saint Michael, nice. and so the mass was the uh, the mass centered around St. Michael because they, they are able to do that because the church is named for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, the parish grouping is named for him. So yeah, beautiful time. So let's let's just briefly touch on the catechism to remind us how the church sees the angels in terms of our life and the life of the church. So if we go to Catechism of Catholic Church 334 and 335, in the meantime, the whole life of the church benefits from the mysterious and powerful help of angels. In her liturgy, the church joins with the angels to adore the thrice holy God. She invokes their assistance. Moreover, in the cherubic hymn of the Byzantine liturgy, she celebrates the memory of certain angels, more particularly St. Michael, St. Gabriel, St. Raphael, and the guardian angels. Okay, so... We know there's nine choirs of angels, meaning there's there's different types of angels that are mentioned in Scripture. Um, but there's these four specific angels, you know, and the guardian angel, that's a general one. It's a reference to a specific type of angel. But these three named ones, and most of us know that St. Michael is the one who casts Satan out of heaven at the beginning of the war in heaven, and at Revelations at the end of the story, he's the one that casts Satan down. Um, and throws him into the lake of fire. So he plays a big role that way. But boy, he has a number of other roles. But before we get to those, St. Gabriel, let's, let's, not, um, let's not leave them behind. St. Gabriel is essentially the archetype for a messenger. He's kind of like the angel that represents messengers, primarily because of the Annunciation when he comes to Mary and he brings the message that she's going to bear Jesus. St. Raphael is associated with healing, and Michael is associated with spiritual warfare primarily. So we have kind of spiritual warfare, messages from heaven, and healing from heaven are kind of the three big names that the church takes from Scripture and uses a, to give us, gives us to think about angels. Scripture gives us the names, but the church says, think about angels in terms of spiritual warfare, delivering messages from heaven, and healing. And then guardian angels, which we'll talk more about later this week, is the individual angels that are assigned to us that stay with us in a particular way to help us through life. Mm-hmm. But Deb, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I was just going to say I'm a little bit off. You know, it's interesting because I get thrown off when we have the last day of the month on a Monday. Okay, so I and I misspoke and I think I even misspoke on the spirit world. So I I don't know how I did that. October 2nd is the Feast of the Guardian Angels, which is Wednesday, not Tuesday. We're going to talk, we may be talking about it tomorrow, a day ahead of time. So I just wanted to make sure our, our listeners know that yesterday, Sunday was the Feast of the Archangels. And Wednesday, October 2nd, is the Feast of the Guardian Angels. But go ahead, Adam, pick up. I, you know, it's, I get a little off when these, when these, when these uh, months are going way too fast, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I, I do, too. Life is flying by. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so one of the titles of Michael is Prince of the Heavenly Host. So Prince is kind of, you know, leader, the general of God's army, and he's seen as the figure that casts Satan down. 
And it touches on something that's kind of a, a pet thing with me, Deb. Some church fathers, and this was debated early on, and, and um, I think the consensus falls on the latter, but some said, well, archangel is the second choir of angels. There's mm -hmm. angel and then archangel. That's right. And then moving up to seraphim, which are the ones that are directly in the presence of God the Father in heaven. And people debated a little bit back and forth, is Michael an archangel, meaning a second rank, or is he a seraphim? Mm -hmm. And the consensus I've read, I don't know about you, is that mm -hmm. he's a seraphim. And that yes, it falls that's what on, I've read as well. On, mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, being the prince of the heavenly host, it makes sense that he would be directly in the presence of God and doing so much. But here's the neat thing about Michael. He isn't just the guy that kicks Satan's butt. The church recognizes so many other roles. He guards the church and the people of God. Okay, so protects them, not just spiritually, but physically. He assists us at the hour of death. Mm -hmm. Some writers, excuse me, some writers uh, think that he is the one that escorts us to our judgment. Yeah, I've read and, that as well. Go ahead. Yeah, and if we mm -hmm. make it to heaven, he's the one that takes us to heaven. Right. So he's assisting us at the hour of death with our final trials. He's helping with the judgment process. He's probably the one that escorts us through all of this. So on a personal level, he's very, very important. The church has appealed to him down through the centuries to end plagues and wars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's that famous statue um, in Rome on, on that fort a little bit away from the Vatican with him uh, raising a sword. Right. That's in reference to a plague that he ended in, in Rome mm -hmm. where they appealed to him to end this plague. And there was a vision where people saw him standing there on that castle and he sheathed his sword. And that was the moment the plague ended. There's also wars, huge wars that different kings and leaders appealed to in history. And there was divine intervention and it ended. Interesting, on another personal level, he has prepared people for apparitions of Mary. That's if we true. go back if we go back to the Fatima kids, mm -hmm. they experienced him as a young man who came and taught them about the rosary, taught them about how to receive communion gave them theology lessons so that they would be ready to have an interaction with Mary and have the proper formation. And he did that as a young man in a very gentle way. Right. Police and firefighters and soldiers invoke him all the time. Well, that's why we're at, that's why we're opening up the phone lines. If you are a police officer or if you were in the military and you have brought in St. Michael to to really help you um, during during your work, please call us. If you maybe you had an encounter or you were you were really um, you know surprised at how quickly he he uh, responds. I mean, it's pretty incredible. Here's the number: eight seven 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 five seven nine four two four. That's the number. But call quickly because we only have a few minutes to open up the phone lines, and we'd love to get you in to see if there's something that you wanted to share with the Morning Joy listeners about Saint Michael the Archangel. But Adam, real quickly, you know, you're talking about his role. You know, that's why um, when you when you go into a church and you see a Saint Michael statue or uh, a stained glass or, or something, uh, an image, an icon of St. Michael. It's very important to stop for a moment and just reflect on everything you just shared, because I think sometimes St. Michael gets overlooked um, just because he's he's there and it, it, he's like the protector and he's there and, he, and we know that, but it's like people don't know exactly um, how to bring him into their spiritual life. You know who did it so beautifully and, and he was very much a part of the development of EWTN is Mother Angelica. Mm, yeah. Yes. And, you know, speaking of that, I want to go back to the war in heaven just for a moment because you okay. mentioned protector. And there, a lot of people know the St. Michael prayer. And, and they kind of associate like, okay, we're going to call Michael and he's going to defend us against, you know, demonic oppression and he's going to beat up the devil. But there's something important folded into that, that, that we often miss. We hear about the war in heaven and I know we don't have much time on this segment, but it's really brief. Okay. If we go to Revelation 12, book 12, verse 11, it describes how Michael 
and the whole, and the two thirds of the angels that were obedient to God defeated the devil. Was it with fists or guns or spears or swords? No. Let's read. They conquered him by the blood of the lamb, mm -hmm. and by the word of their testimony. Wow. This is so deep, because this is happening at the beginning of creation. The sacrifice of Jesus is much later in the story. It reminds us that the victory is through Jesus. The blood of the Lamb, the sacrifice of Jesus, is an eternal event that touches all of time, mm -hmm. all of space, all of history. And it is through the sacrifice of Jesus that victory is won. And secondly, by the word of their testimony. The name Michael, of course, many people know, means who is like God. Right. It's a question. The word of his testimony was who is like God, only God. And that is what defeated, defeated. the devil. Wow. <laughs> Powerful stuff. That's why I wish we, you were so blessed to be able to go to Mass at a, a, a church named after St. Michael. We didn't, well, unfortunately, we didn't have that opportunity. In fact, there was hardly any mention of of uh, the the Feast of the Archangels and the Guardian Angel Feast coming up. And uh, that's unfortunate, I think, because I think we need more catechesis on the angels, not less, you know. So um, we're going to hold it right there, Adam. And on the second segment, I've got a, uh, we've got a Facebook comment that just came in from Nancy I'm going to share with our listeners. And also, if you'd like to jump in on a phone line or make a comment on Facebook, please do so just like Nancy did, or call us at 877-757-9424. But for now, we'll hold it there and send it back to Keith. All righty. Thank you so much, Debbie and Adam. And uh, yes, yeah, speaking of St. Michael the Archangel, it reminded me that we talked to Marge Fenelon a few months ago about St. Michael the Archangel and, and her book. Uh, and she also went into detail about calling, you know, St. Michael's part of the special forces, part of God's special forces. And uh, just if you hadn't seen it, just go and search on our YouTube channel to search the Morning Joy interview playlist. It'll be in there. It's in July. But hey, fun fact, since we're all talking about archangels and all of that, my baptismal anniversary falls on September 29th, which I, it's funny, every time, every year I always forget. And then like a few days before, I'm like, oh, my, my baptismal anniversary is on the same day as the Feast of the Archangels. And uh, it's always a nice little surprise that I, I save for myself, I guess. I don't know. I'll have to ask my parents if they planned that, if that was done on purpose. But talk about a powerful day, celebrating those incredible angels and then my baptism. But uh, quick announcements, speaking of the YouTube and all of that, then we're getting live comments. Uh, GRN's YouTube channel has officially over hit, hit over 5,000 subscribers. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, yeah, round of applause there. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Really a great way to watch and see us. Uh, a lot of the shows that we produce, like Morning Joy, The Spirit World, which Debbie and Adam are all part of, The Quest, and so many more. So make sure if you're not following us on YouTube, find us, search Morning Joy Radio or GRN Online. But hey, coming up next, we are continuing this conversation of how to implement St. Michael and all the archangels into our lives after this break on Morning Joy. You're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters. Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and we are continuing the next right thing, the conversation all about archangels they can help us out with Debbie Giordiani and Adam Fly. Take it away, Debbie. Adam. Thanks so much, Keith. Okay, we're gonna have to go quickly, Adam, but just a couple things. If somebody wants to jump in and share a St. Michael story, please do so. 877-757-9424. I think that was so cool how Keith um, uh, was uh, baptized on, on the Feast of the Archangels. That's just beautiful. Nancy on Facebook, Adam says, her family has started including the St. Michael prayer in their nightly prayers thanks to the holy card they received at the Spirit World event. That's the speaker series in Houston in July when we were there. That's exactly why we handed that out, Nancy, and that's exactly why we encourage on the Spirit World for folks to uh, bring in the St. Michael prayer. Uh, I, I suggest morning and evening, Nancy, but Nan uh, Nancy, you're saying at nighttime, that is great. But Adam, um, you know, and I'm not trying to, 
I'm not trying to say anything uh, negative about any anything that went on at, at masses this weekend, but you know this is an opportunity as for for us as the lay faithful. If we're involved in parish ministry, you know we have the whole week. You know we, we just celebrated the feast of the archangels. We're going into the feast of the guardian angels. You know maybe talk to your pastor and say this week can you talk about the angels? It's important because most people will not go into the summa of Saint Thomas Aquinas, and most people will maybe they might read the the, the paragraphs in the catechism of the catholic church and that's fantastic but there's so much more to the the angels and the archangels and and um the choirs of angels that you can do the 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 chaplet of uh with the holy angels you can do all sorts of things you can go to opusangelorum.org and read more there that's the holy work of the angels um but adam wouldn't you agree that this week especially these couple days it's important for us to actually turn our attention to the angels Exactly. And, you know, before I forget to mention it, you know, we, we talked about some of the roles uh, that the church has identified that Michael plays. There's others. So for those that are thinking, oh, what about this? What about that? There are others. We, we're just hitting some of the highlights there. Um, I wanted to touch on something really beautiful, Deb. So a lot of people know about these white stones. I'll hold, mm-hmm. I'll hold it up, right? These, yep. these little white stones that a lot of people get from the cave in Gargano, Italy, where St. Michael sanctified the cave and made it a church and promised that the stones taken from the cave would go around the world and heal people of diseases and basically provide healing for them. Over time, those stones have been really associated with, with exorcism and, and kind of spiritual warfare. And my point is, I want to tell a brief story about one of these stones that we don't want to get so focused on spiritual warfare in like an unhealthy way we're like oh that's what michael does and that's what those stones are for what i mean is spiritual warfare conversion spiritual conversion and spiritual growth than it is about beating up demons and stopping problems god allows through his permissive will for problems to happen in the first place because repentance and conversion is needed otherwise we wouldn't be falling into these relationships with these deceptive spirits. Let me give you an example. I was down in, I believe it was Austin, a number of years ago with my friend Deacon Guadalupe down there, and he had one of the large stones from the cave, well, the ones that are about the size of your fist or a little bit smaller, and he had just received it. And by the way, we installed one at St. Anthony Relic Chapel in Pittsburgh over the weekend for St. Michael's Feast Day, really cool. Beautiful. Now, we went out to lunch at San Miguel Restaurant, a restaurant named for St. Michael, filled with Catholic imagery and, and other things. It was amazing. We set the stone on the table in the reliquary while we were eating. Mm-hmm. Deb, we had three different people had spiritual conversions walking past that table. Wow. We had a waitress walking past who kept pausing and looking mm-hmm. and then walking, then came back and stood for a second and didn't say anything. We had another walk by and then they approached us and they said, what is that? The one woman was crying. She said, I haven't been to mass in 20 years since I came to this country. I got into trouble with sin, you know, right before I came here and I haven't gone back to mass. I'm going to mass on Sunday. I'm going to confession. Hmm. She didn't even know what it was, what the stone was. Another woman came up and said, I'm going to return to the church. I've been away from the church. I feel that I need to return to the church. A third person came up and had a conversion experience, meaning spiritual growth. And they kept coming and looking at this stone. And then the owner of the restaurant, about 15 minutes later, because we continued to leave it on the table, came up and said, excuse me, can I ask you guys, what is that? All my staff are talking about it back in the kitchen. Everybody's having these experiences. Right, right. And so Deacon Guadalupe explained what it was and mm-hmm. said, would you like me to bless the restaurant? Oh, and, the, yeah. and the owner said, yeah, yeah, please. And so mm-hmm. he stood up in the middle of lunch and blessed the restaurant, making the sign of the cross with the stone in four mm-hmm. different, you know, the four different directions to bless everyone in the restaurant. It was so beautiful. My point is, Michael isn't just about spiritual warfare. Like a lot of people think of spiritual warfare, like, oh, take away this problem. I don't like this. It's more about our conversion. That's right. Mm -hmm. And our repentance than it is about Michael, come kick kick this thing's butt and take it away. Mm -hmm. What Michael wants 
is us to grow close closer to Christ and focus more on Christ exactly. as opposed to thinking of him as like the divine, you know, bouncer who's going to come and take care of the problem. He wants us to grow closer with Christ and loving and trusting Christ. Well, that's exactly why Padre Pio used to send people to the St. Michael Cave in Gargano, Italy, for that for that exact reason, for the for the interior healing of the soul, right? And that that's so important. And St. Michael plays these various roles, and and that's that's why I, Adam, I I started off this the next right thing a little bit disappointed. I have to tell you because I. I would have I would have liked to have seen you know more uh, churches talking and masses on the weekend about the archangels for this exact reason because people are you know there's a lot of sick souls out there that need help wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially in this time where the world is becoming less religious and there's a lot of effort being made to kind of separate and stamp out religion. And unfortunately, you know, we're not catechizing. To a large extent, the next generation. So yeah, this this is going to be a time of a lot of angelic activity. There's always been lots of angelic activity. They're fighting for us constantly. They're healing. They're encouraging us when we're tempted. You know, they're helping us to repent. Um, but this is going to be a particular time to invoke Michael. You know, the St. Michael prayer was mm -hmm. initially written. We don't know exactly what happened, but there was some type of vision about an attack on the church. And and, um, you know, Leo XIII, it was back in 1890, said, you know, this prayer needs to be said at the end of every Mass in the world. And it was for, you know, a number of decades. But it's been taken out recently. A lot of, a lot of right. churches have taken it out, which is unfortunate. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But some churches still do it, um, you know, if the bishop allows it. It's, it's said after Mass. Right. So, you know, this is a good time to remember that Michael helps us in a number of ways, including spiritual warfare. Yeah, those stones are also used in spiritual warfare. We use them in exorcisms. Um, I would encourage people that don't feel um, like you need a stone from the cave to invoke Michael. His prayer is amazing, Deb. Mm -hmm. I have seen during exorcisms, like when we're taking a break, and maybe I'm just sitting with the person and Father's taking a break and, and we're talking or just praying quietly. The St. Michael prayer whispered in the ear of the possessed person. I have seen them howl and claw to get away from the person wow. just gently saying his prayer. Mm -hmm. And it looks like an a full-blown exorcism is continuing. So, you know, his prayer is amazing. Icons of him I have found to be really super oh, useful yeah. in spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Um so, you know, I yeah. would just in, in, encourage us that remember it's conversion and there's a number of ways to bring Michael into your life. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you were going to mention we, we're going to have a good article posted that EWTN On wrote. EWTN. Yep. We got to send it back to Keith, but you don't have to convince me anymore, Adam. I'm, 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 I'm sold. I, my confirmation name is after St. Michael, so I get it. And uh, so, yeah, we've got a, uh, uh, Tim, our producer, is going to post some articles from EWTN on the Archangels. And Adam, have a beautiful rest of your day. God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to send it back to Keith. Thanks, Debbie and Adam. And yes, if you've uh, really found this conversation edifying, you want to share it with your friends or family, you can certainly do that audio only because this is now the next right thing is now a podcast or in a podcast form. So if you are on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, maybe you can go to the grnonline.com website slash joy, of course, scroll down, and you'll be able to copy and paste that link and uh, make it really easy for to share, uh, share it for all your friends and family. Um, I, we asked, you know, do you have any archangel stories? And uh, we'll maybe touch on those a little bit on the After Show Clubhouse. So if you do have any archangel stories you'd like to share, put them in the live chat. We'll revisit them after the show on, on the uh, After Show Clubhouse. But coming up next, we're talking about the month of the rosary that's coming up just starting tomorrow. And what we're going to be talking about and doing all about as far as the rosary goes after this break. You're listening to Morning Joy where truth matters.